At the beginning of the first lockdown, I was asked to provide some content to help people connect with nature whilst at home. I'm no expert at making videos, and I know that capturing wildlife on film is incredibly difficult. So it's no coincidence that my first effort involved filming one of the slowest moving creatures you can find in the garden. Um, today, I'm gonna to chat with Maya Bambrick, and she's an 18-year-old photographer, vlogger, and key, keen birder based in Crawley. So I'm delighted to be able to pick her brains. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping that you can give us some good advice on how to get started with making your own nature videos and telling wildlife stories. You are pretty busy on social media um, yeah. and you've got your own YouTube channel. So my videos, my vlogs uh, started around last year. Uh, when my friend Sam uh, started this challenge called the Vlog Down Challenge. And um, each sort of weekend we had to come up with a vlog on like, a different topic and then put it on our social, social media uh, to a wider audience. And since then, um, I've just sort of carried that on myself on all different topics like fungi, plants, insects, which before I probably would have overlooked, but because it's just more accessible and you can actually film it because um, they don't move around as much as birds do. Um, I've really sort of branched out into different um, parts of wildlife, uh, which I probably wouldn't have done without lockdown. So, I mean, that's the benefit of lockdown. Words I thought I'd never say. I'm out with Dougie, using my selfie stick for the first time. I wish I'd thought of using my phone from the beginning, but most of my work was filmed on an SLR stills camera, which has a video mode. In retrospect, I could have saved myself a lot of time if I'd invested in some basic equipment, but there was a need to improvise at short notice. This was my first tripod. Yes, that is a chest of drawers, some books, and even a sardine can propping up my camera with the help of some gaffer tape. It is perhaps unsurprising then that much of my footage was badly filmed, cutting off my head, filming my feet, or out of focus. What equipment do you use for your video and your editing? Uh, so obviously I've got my phone here, that's the phone I use. Uh, and then I use iMovie uh, on my phone. The camera on there is good enough for most people's phones nowadays. Uh, so I don't think you need to use necessarily a big camera. But um, most phones have like an app, which is a movie editor. Most of them are free. Uh, you don't need like some really complicated software to put a vlog together. Um, just something you can where you can put uh, little videos together, add a bit of text, add some background music. I think that's all you need really. And you can do all of that on your phone. You can add text and, back and music as well. Yeah, yeah, all on my phone. <laughs> Makes it much easier. <laughs> Amazing. What have I been, I've been going so wrong. It's something that, that is accessible for young people to do. And it's cool as well. Bad audio can ruin a great piece of video. Cars, wind in the trees. Everything looks better on a still sunny day. Do you always get good footage of the birds or the things that you're trying to capture? Um, not always, I must admit. So, I mean, back in the summer, I tried to do a little film on butterflies uh, for the big butterfly camp, and they're absolutely impossible to film. But they don't want to sit still for more than about one second. Uh, but sometimes I take my camera, take a few photos, and then put that in it as well. You don't even necessarily have to have that good footage do you if you can talk about it well i mean it's good to be able to describe things um and obviously i like to try and do it in a bit of a chatty way i don't want to make my videos all formal like serious i want to make them like a normal teenager like and and who who is your audience like are you, are you making videos for other teenagers i hope so i mean my main sort of goal is to be sort of to try and combat stereotypes um, of what birders are. So I think even now, um, a lot of young people do think it's a sort of a old white man's hobby, which it isn't obviously. Um, and so I really want to sort of show other teenagers that are teenagers involved, that it's something you can do as a hobby 
is something that, that is accessible for young people to do and it's cool as well. Do you ever sort of think about getting things from different angles or close-ups and cutaways and oh yeah yeah I try to so I'll film um say three or four clips of me talking uh, to the camera and then I have the footage that I try and film to put in between me talking so whether it be me filming a plant or filming an insect or filming the landscape um, I try and have a mix of where I am what I'm seeing and what, what I'm saying so it's sort of try and make it a bit different um, obviously I'm not gonna people are not gonna be engaged if you're talking for like however long so you need something to break it up with um, and so yeah I tend to cut it up like that really and put it all together I heard someone on the radio saying that they recorded their voiceover under a duvet so it might sound a little bit mad but intermittently over the last few months this is where you might find me with a script camera and torch do you write a script uh so it depends what the video is on so if i'm doing it based on a, a specific topic like i've done one recently about the big golden bird watch so for that i did write a little script uh in the notes on my phone actually but i tend to not feel me speaking in one big chunk uh, i tend to break it down into small sort of manageable pieces that i can actually remember but then Sometimes I'll go out on a walk, say to my local park, Tilgate. I think, oh, I might as well just do a little vlog, uh, see what I find. I suppose any other top tips uh, for, for telling wildlife stories? So I would say to try and call, uh, keep them short and snappy. So on most social media, on Twitter, for example, you can only actually put on a two minute and 20 second video. So I tend to keep it below that. Just do something you're really passionate about and obviously that it shows through your video that you're passionate about something. Um, I would say also do it on conservation issues. Uh, vlogs can be a good way of getting a message across, um, especially on social media. So I've done mine about mental health uh, and nature. One last question. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what are the benefits of giving yourself a video mission whilst mm. you're out and about? Like, are there benefits to mm. you? Oh, definitely. I think it's even sort of an aspect of mindfulness, I think, because you're so focused on uh, finding the little small details that people might find interesting um, and really like immerse yourself in nature, I find. Um, so it really does have its benefits. Great. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today, Maya. Thanks so no much. And I Thank really you. Hope that that's inspired some other people to get out there and tell their stories too. Me too.